post-Christendom era seems to resemble what the Israelites experienced in exile at the hands of the Babylonian Empire. Displacement and mockery from foes, Israel the Chosen, is this still the hope? No longer the dominant culture, we weep and desire for the good old days and are frustrated at those who may be at blame for taking this away. So with this in mind, do we fight back to win over influence in society, restoring Christian foundation in America through organizing, marches, changing of politics, etc.? But is this God's will? Because the 20th century collapse of Christendom in Europe and Canada seems a more likely scenario for America than a return to a dominant Christian culture? Or do we become defensive, turn inward and wait for the coming of the Lord, withdraw ourselves from culture and return to when the church was really the church? No, because this could only halt the church from discerning the times and creatively respond to the needs in the present. What if we are asked to do what God told the people of Israel to do during their exile and displacement. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city. Rethink our present condition. Rethink our understanding of God and our Christian tradition, which we have taken for granted. We will resume this new concept on how we can deal with the displacement in our culture as the church first Let's deal with the dividing factor, preventing true change within ourselves and our contact with those different than us. Traditionally, not only did the state divide itself from the church, we as the church have placed a wall between ourselves and the culture, us and they mentality, walls of hostility. The dividing wall of hostility, similar to the Jews and the Gentiles, what about the church and the unchurched? We must refocus on the powerful witness of lived out reconciliation among peoples of different color and culture. This is what the prophet Jeremiah meant when he said, Procurar la paz de la ciudad. Procurar rather than seek, as we are familiar with the passage in the language, English language, means to find or accomplish an objective or an end. Seeking the peace of the city is missional. Missional living is a verb, it's an action. Living missionally is about moving back into the neighborhood or investing where you have been placed or where you are have, or where you have previously felt or currently feel displaced as a dominant culture and discern what God is doing in that particular context. Being missional goes beyond our own exposition of our denomination, our church, our building. When the gospel begins to tear down the walls, we often find that God's spirit has already been at work in powerful ways on the other side. We often find that our own experience of the gospel is now enriched in fellowship with those we previously feared or avoided. Practicing peace, the church to the culture, may have to begin at the middle ground of understanding mutual interest. The idea not only gives hope to the Christian feeling displaced from Christian values being underappreciated, but provides the practicality on how those values should be demonstrated. A new imagination. Most Christians recognize the need for missionaries to translate or contextualize the gospel in appropriate ways to specific cultures. Our churches need to do the same in contextualizing itself to respond to the needs of the community. There isn't a one-size-fits-all type of ministry or way of engaging in an individual. Each culture, each person may have a unique language, not only the system of which to communicate deriving from a country or community, but their own contextual setting to be considered. Traditionally speaking, we, the majority of traditional churches, have become comfortable with a construct that presents ministry in a way of having a nice building and a good neighborhood with a charismatic leader and our good programming and might I add parking which would then bring non-Christians to be evangelized and presented with the message of salvation. However, the argument is, or might I say the new imagination of what being the church is, is believing in which actions flow from such a belief that the missional response of the church to be a sending one as opposed to an attractional one only. Jesus told his disciples, as the Father sent me, so I send you. The church, the one Jesus instituted, 
established and empowered has been given the mandate to be representatives, not only in the kingdom in which our king reigns supreme over all things, but to rep represent the king himself, following the lead of Jesus and how he operated on earth can provide the church a blueprint, so to say, on how we too should operate. Jesus contextually met humanity where it was, became flesh and blood in order to sympathize with our weaknesses. We too, and could, take the same approach in order to contextually meet individuals where they are. Alan Hirsch, author of The Forgotten Way, explained that God's central way of reaching his world was to incarnate himself in Jesus. And our way of reaching the world should likewise be incarnational. In practice, it would look like moving into the community, learning the language, building healthy and genuine relationships, facilitate a context where communication and demonstration of the gospel may happen. In order to do so, we need God's Spirit to direct us. Interestingly, we discussed how Jesus never seemed to complete something as he did it before. Different ways he healed the blind and met each individual where they were, so we too must ask God to direct us contextually to the people he has appointed us to connect with, assessing our surroundings, identifying the move of God, and joining him in mission into the world, assessing what we do have. Vocation is not arriving at a destination, but more so using what you have where you are. Think of the boy with the five loaves and two fishes. Missional churches need to cultivate what for many of us is a forgotten art, the ability to discern what God is up to in our world or in our neighborhood. Feeling this place should not encourage us to shrink back in fear or become frustrated with the diversity in which we encounter ourselves in a diverse culture. However, excite us for the opportunity to ask God direction on how to meet individuals contextually where they are and incarnationally share and reflect the gospel because the gospel displayed give credence to the gospel declared.